Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors Special Meeting. Article of Agreement Review Committee, Monday, December 21st, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. by Google Meet. Call the order. All right. And this time I will uh, make sure we have uh, a note taker. And um, Justine, would you be willing to take it on again? Or we actually have, uh, I don't know how you feel, Pat. We have, I asked Jamie if it was all right, if somebody was not on the committee actually took notes. And uh, Pat, um, Pat said she would be taking notes anyway for the select board, so she would be happy to. How, do, how does the committee feel about that? Charity, are you okay with that? Sorry, unmuting issues. No. Um, I don't have a party problem with that as long as we've confirmed it's okay to do that. Yep, yeah, we, I, I, I talked with Jamie, he said, and Dean is nodding her head too. Tim, you okay with that? I'm good with that, but I thought good. that JC did a very nice job last time. But yeah, I'm I'm glad. Uh, well, I just haven't heard. Is JC on? I thought yeah, she was. I'm here. Oh, okay. I, gotcha. I wasn't going to um, volunteer, but I will if I have to. I'm going to be traveling a lot a lot this week um, for work, but I can I could do it at the end of the week. Well, uh, how about why don't we, uh, Pat? Do you, if you don't mind, Pat, do, do your best and send it on to us, and we'll we'll uh, we'll take it from there. How about that? Would that be okay? Because I think it better. I'd, I'd love it, Justine, if you were more focused on what we're talking about than, you know, what, than trying to catch everything and write it down. Yeah, I, I think so too. That, But I would be happy to do it if next time or something like that. But I'm happy sure. with Pat doing it. Great. Pat, if, I'm you, if you don't, Pat, if you don't mind, please take over. Thank you. Already started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Great, thank you. All right, um, and we um, do we have any questions about the Tuesday, December 15th minutes? I think we all looked at them after JC sent them in. I don't, I felt like they got to the charity. Thumbs up on those. Tim, thumbs up on those. I'm good. Good, Justine, thumbs up on those. Good, I'm thumbs up on those. I think for us that will, do it. Uh, approve the meetings, uh, the m minutes of Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. Okay, let's get to the response from Dina. And I'm going to pull this up for me right now. I apologize for not being a little more. Hey. Uh, Ethan, do we need to do any additions to the agenda first? Well, I thought we we just approved it. We thought, the, oh, the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Good. How about, what do you think? I don't have any. Neither You're do right. I. I like the agenda. Uh, Charity? I like the agenda. I just have one when we do get to the uh, response from the lawyer, I just want, I think before we start, there's an item I need to clarify because I think my suggestion was misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page so we don't waste a ton of discussion time on that if we don't need to. Okay. Excellent. So this is when we get to one of the um, one of the responses from the lawyer, you want to talk about it before we actually talk to Dina about it. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So let's go down one at a time. The first one was, can we warn articles uh, of change to the merger agreement, have them voted on by Australian ballot on town meeting day for Rochester and Stockbridge? Do we need to wait until school meeting in May? And the answer, the board can, if the warning and notice requirements are done correctly, warn a vote to amend the Articles of Agreement on Town Meeting Day. It would be a special meeting of the board, not the annual. So the warning would need to be posted and published realistically between January 21st and January 29th. Uh, the absolute last day, Sunday, January 31st. If you wanna have a vote on Town Meeting Day, uh, the warning sample ballot would need to be posted in at least one public place within each town, uh, published at least 
uh, once in a newspaper, it has a circulation in the two towns. I suspect that the towns are promoting mail-in ballots, absentee ballots, so it would be important to work with the two town clerks so that they have the ballots if, when people request them. The board will need to approve the warnings and the public question, the proposed amendments to the article at the meeting between January 21st and January 29th. The proposed amendments will need to be individual separate articles on the warning. Yep, we knew that. Uh, the vote is counted separately in each town, not commingled and is reported out to the town clerks to the union district clerk. While the votes are counted separately in each town, it is the majority of the combined totals that carries the day. Good. Do we have any, um, I mean, I think this pretty much answers our question. Uh, are there any further questions uh, on this to Dina Charity? So just to clarify, even though it would be on the same day as the other meeting, it would essentially be its own meeting being held at the same time as the other. So two meetings at the same time, one after the other. Uh, so if, if I could say what you would be doing is my understanding is that your annual school board meeting is sometime in May. I believe it's towards the end of May. Correct. The fact that it is a select board town meeting day, that they also in fact have their town meeting is not relevant to um, whether or not you have a vote on, uh, on article, to amend your articles of agreement. You could not wait, for example, um, and do it uh, on the same day as your town as your annual meeting for the school board, because there's provisions about, and especially when I asked about doing something by Australian ballot, it wouldn't be effective for the year you're talking about. You're talking about the upcoming 21 going into 22 year to have it done. If you did it at your May meeting, you would have a problem. There's to do it that way. You can hold what's called a special meeting, which you can hold special meetings throughout your year anyhow, right? Um, you could hold it on town meeting day. I, I The reason why I focused in on town meeting day is, um, I, I think one is, I think that was the direct question, but also I think it came with an assumption you would have more people voting on town meeting day too. Uh, yeah, so the idea, I think to volunteer charity, are we, do we actually have to, as a school board, meet on the town meeting day? Um, well, no, because because it's because you're in COVID, we we're going to be doing this by Australian ballot, meaning you're yeah. not going to have a floor meeting. Okay. So no, so no, you do not have to. Okay. To so the, all we do is get a ballot. Um, you get a, a warning and a ballot, yeah, and I would. And Yep, and I would prepare the same way I do your your annual meeting warning and ballot. <laughs> I would do your um, your warning and your ballot for this. I, the dates are, tend to are, are important, right? Because you have to post it not more than forty and not less than thirty days before you hold the meeting, and so that's why I'm providing to you that the issue of having your warning approved, published, and posted needs to be done before Jan between January 21st and 29th. Because realistically, the 30th and the 31st are a weekend. Got you. And Charity? I oh, yeah. yeah, I just think it's really important that we make sure we're very clear that this is not a ballot that's being added to a town ballot uh, in conjunction. We need to make sure that everyone understands and is clear that this would be its own separate entity of voting items mm -hmm. just happening on the same day and that there's that's a totally separate issue. Mm -hmm. Just so that there's not a ton of questions of why isn't this on the town ballot? Like yep. just make sure everyone's very clear that separate thing just happening on the same day for convenience sake. So right. I, I, yes. Yeah, I mean, they, that's how the warning is going to say the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District, you know, hereby warns. Um, I, I've dealt with your two town clerks who are very well versed in how to do the Australian ballot at this point um, for, for you guys. And they understand what that is. I just want to make sure that you keep in mind, because you are going to do it by Australian ballot, that people are, are may, in fact, request absentee ballots from your 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 town 
your town clerks. And Does so that the this timing? should be part of this. Does that affect the timing? Of, of no. Of we need to get us get our uh, amendment posted and warned? No, nope, because the town is under the same pressures for posting it not more than 40 and not less than 30 before town meeting day. Okay. Okay. And town meeting day is the second in March. So I just counted back. Good. In, my, uh, in Rochester, because we do Monday night. You do Monday night? Night. Yes, we do. That's right. You, so you, do you do it by a floor vote, Patricia? Well, no, it'll be a certain ballot. So I imagine our vote will be up first. Okay, so I will double yes. check on the days to make sure that we have the warning and the and the ballot done. So that's interesting. So Rochester is going to vote before Stockbridge. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. Okay. Good. Do we have further questions on number one? Anybody? Tim, Charity, Justine. I'm getting negatives no. all around. Okay. No. Oh, Tim. Yep, you're good. Okay. Number two, um, we would like to have you write us a proposed article to change the way school board members are elected. Uh, this is our question, just so we know, um, the audience knows. We would like the article to have board members nominated and elected within the town they, res they reside. That should my mis error there. We do not want that large voting. And answer is, while this is possible, how do you envision the vote taking place? In any non-COVID-19 year, you will hold a floor meeting and vote on all items, except if you were to do a bond vote, uh, including voted for directors. Are you contemplating making the election of directors to be an Australian balloting and keeping everything else as a floor meeting? The board should discuss this before I provide proposed language. So I'm, I'm, I don't quite, I'll start, I, I don't quite understand what you're saying. Is this going forward outside of a COVID-19 year? Yes. So, okay. so, so you're going to be doing, uh, do you have director positions which are up? Do you have director positions which are up this year? You do. Um, so this year you're going to more than likely, I assume, because of COVID-19 being doing an Australian balloting, right? Doing a polling place, doing absentee Correct. voting like we did last spring. Correct. You, however, typically hold a floor meeting. You don't typically vote on anything by Australian ballot, right? I see what you're getting at. Okay. And you have a combined meeting. Right, mm -hmm. where you have Rochester residents, you have Stockbridge residents. I'm not saying that it is not possible to, in fact, still maintain it at a, as a floor meeting. It, it would be a little bit important, difficult, depending on how many people show up to your floor meetings, your annual meeting, to make sure that the individuals who are voting are only the residents of one town not who are voting for their representative it can charity. be done i just was asking whether or not that's what you wanted to do got your charity um so when i had originally mentioned this idea one of the questions i had presented was in doing this would it be more practical to remand the votes back to the town level because that would essentially fix what dina is mentioning if these votes happened during town meeting, then you've got, then there's town control over are the correct voters voting for the correct parties and it's happening at the town level. That was a piece of the puzzle that I, it, that's one of the two confusion pieces that I wanted to bring up was that I don't know the legality of that because this is a school representative vote but mm -hmm. because of the action we're trying to take with, and the outcome we would like from it, would it, is it more practical from a legal standpoint to move it back to those representatives being voted for during individual town meetings? 
you would st that would have no bearing in my mind but i openly say i do not understand law um that would not affect any budget voting or any board voting but it would entirely correct the piece that we're trying to work with of removing those from the board portion the school portion and putting it back into the two towns but again i don't know the legality on that but it would certainly simplify things as dina's indicating there could be complications would you like me to respond to that yes please yes. <laughs> okay there there are three potential options here you could keep it as your floor vote typically in may which i don't think you're going to have this year either but but let's just say in non-COVID years, you're gonna go back to that. Uh, as I indicated, there is some sort of, you can do paper ballots in a floor meeting. So you could somewhat separate it out, but it would be difficult. I think it would take a lot of time in your floor meeting to effectuate that. There are school districts which do do votes. As a matter of fact, I think White River Unified School District has a bifurcated floor vote and doing something by Australian ballot. And I apologize because I, you all have separate articles of agreement. They happen to do them within two days, right? So it's town, you know, the day before town, the night before town meeting, then they break to go, they do town meeting and they have, they, they break it out. There are other districts that do that as well. Um, um, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, Mount, Abraham Unified School District in Bristol, St uh, Starksboro, et cetera. Dina, <clears throat> just a sec. Can I just get a clarification? So you're saying, like, as you said, town meeting. Did you mean the school meeting and then two days? and they I, Yeah, I'm meeting? sorry. I mean the school meeting. So I'm sorry. So the three versions, thank you, Ethan, for, for making that, because I always have to remember you are in May. Yep. You could do it the floor vote in May. Yep. I think that's difficult for you. You could still keep your meetings your meeting and your vote in May and bifurcate it out as having the election of your school directors being done in May by Australian ballot, as well as having the remainder of your meeting done by floor vote, by a floor meeting. You could do that. Mm -hmm. You could not, there's nothing that I can think of that would say that you would have any issue of having your school directors being voted on town meeting day and still hold the remainder of your annual meeting. Let me think about that. Mm -hmm. I'd have to check into that whether or not we'd run afoul of the whole warning issue for that if we could separate it out that way. Um, you definitely can do the first two that I said but I would need to check into if, because you have that 40 day warning thing. So you, yeah, I think that it would be problematic if your floor vote went first, that's different because your floor vote can be, um, you can push it off and, and, and hold it to a date certain through, through a motion at your floor vote without having to rewarn it. So I have to think about your, your question and I, and I can get back to you about whether or not you could in fact elect your directors on the actual town meeting day and then have your annual, the remainder of your annual meeting in May. I, I will say this, the way your articles of agreement, if you can do that, talk about is that your, and the way the statute talks about it is those directors, if you can in fact do what you're proposing, would be seated in March as opposed to in May. So the next meeting, they would be the members. Mm -hmm. which is, okay, which is which a little odd. So yeah. let me look in. Let me look into that. There's no one I know who splits it out that far, and I think it's a warning issue. Okay, but I will. I will take a look at it. But you absolutely can do it. Like I said, around when your May meeting is. We can, you can bifurcate it out. It would be like the night before your May meeting, you know, the day before your, your May meeting, do you do it by Australian ballot or you have your May, I would do your floor vote first. And then you would, you would then break it out to a date certain, which is the next day and then do the Australian ballot the next wouldn't, day. Wouldn't there be a problem with that? If it, 
the vote is after the annual meeting, um, annual school meeting that we've just created all our officers and stuff like that. And then the next day we, they might all be voted out two days later, they might be voted out. Yes. You're doing a moderator or school treasurer. Yeah. You, you, you would have some issues. Let me think about that as well. Okay. Well, this uh, is why we called you on Tim. Yeah, go ahead. Um, how come we can't do a meeting the night of and then have Australian votes in both towns and then we would have the exact count of everything, you know, uh, because the budget was voted down twice in Stockbridge. And um, this way we would know do it the way that we used to do the town meeting for the school meeting part and not have a four vote at all just have informational meeting the night before and then australian for uh, everything for everything in both towns and then you that could in fact mr pratt you could in fact do that um that would require and if that's what you choose if that's what your board wants to put out for your amended articles you absolutely could do that you, you could, I, I want to say that Royalton and Bethel vote on their budget by Australian ballot. And that they vote on their school directors through a floor, floor meeting, but I may be incorrect with that. But absolutely, you could, you could remove your floor meeting. I think part of what my recollection is, and, and, and Mr. Pratt, you may know better, um, is that I think one of your towns has historically done a floor meeting and one has historically done Australian ballot. And I think right. it was when you all merged, I, I'm not sure why the floor meeting was picked, but I, I suspect that some people were nostalgic about having floor meetings. Well, that, I mean, if we did something like that, I would think that we would get into tricky ground because I believe Australian ballot for the entire budget has to be a warned article at the annual meeting to change a year before. I think uh, it, that's my understanding of it. So that that would mean we wouldn't be able to change it to do the Australian ballot. So in other words, we've got to figure out this year and then also figure out how we go forward, that there are two, there might be two different things. Is that correct? Well, so well, the, 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 the well, only thing, we'll, we'll get back I'm to sorry. You. Well, no, the thing is, for this year, we could do Australian ballot, ballot and in, in separate towns and the board could approve to move it forward for next year to do that way yes. we're in we're in a different situation right now where we can do australian ballot this year that's true and so you it's guys automatic vote, yeah. and you guys can vote to change it back so that it is kind of, it's never going to be equal representation if we are able to outvote by 50 percent no but, i don't. But at least this way we break it out and we know where the issues are and we can at least discuss them and figure them out. Yep. So, no, I, I, yeah, I would agree with Mr. Pratt. You're actually in a very unique position because as, as he's indicating, because of COVID-19 and because of the legislature's decision to make it as easy as possible to push Australian balloting this year, you're going to hold your budget vote by Australian ballot anyhow this year. Um, I, um, unless for some reason you all come back to me and you decide that you want to hold an outdoor meeting in May, but I would strongly suggest it's probably healthier and safer for everybody to do it by Australian ballot. You have it as one of uh, one of the items, an, an article which your your electorate would vote on, and it would then be going into effect for the next year permanently until voted out at some other meeting if somebody voted, if, you're, if you all voted it out. Okay. So he, he is absolutely correct. You're in a unique position. Um, just a, a further question. Um, is, is that your hesitation for giving us some draft that we could look at? Well, um, I wanted that we didn't, didn't know how to vote it. Yeah, I, yes, that, that I wanted to, to, um, have the conversation with you all to understand what you were looking for in terms of that. I can, I mean, a warning is a warning in articles and article. I mean, I can do it uh, for you, but it, it makes more sense in my brain, I think, to know exactly what you all want to change and give you proposed language for that. 
Well, that's we thought we were doing that, I guess. And maybe if we need, we might need some feedback from you of what we need to be more specific, because we were looking at articles that from our our, our fellow or whatever um, other districts in our SU and how they have worded it, where they have local voting mm -hmm. uh, for their representatives. So we sort of took it from that and we decided, OK, what are the words that we needed? And we said nominated and elected within the town they reside and not mm -hmm. at large voting. So I, I, I don't, you know, if you need something more from us, um, please ask the questions. And, and I think um, um, Charity had some examples from those and you probably have them too, because you have some of the articles from the other districts. Um, Right. It's whether or not you want to, it, it, whether or not the issue, I'm, I'm sorry, Ethan, I wasn't being clear, whether or not you, the issue is that you want to be doing it by Australian ballot moving forward, because that's also an amendment to your articles. Does that make sense? It, it, I, I'm still, yeah, I'm just getting my mind around. Yeah. Uh, Charity, go ahead. Maybe this will help. Yeah, I think what Dina's saying is that if we add into it the piece of we also want it to be done by Australian ballot moving forward, gotcha. it alleviates some of that confusion. Gotcha. So if we in indicate to her that we want to move voting for representatives to be both nominated, elected, and done so by Australian ballot, that gives us more flexibility of when that happens. Gotcha. So we gotcha. could have it happening at town meeting day versus the school budget and just because i i need clarification on this part we are doing the school piece of all this in may because that's when rochester had historically done it correct it was um it, it happened as i remember it of uh, being on the board it happened uh mostly out of convenience because things were so late numbers were so late it kept seeming like hey this this makes sense to do it later because we have more firm numbers. Um, I, it is traditionally, yes, it is traditionally when Rochester holds it, but I don't believe that was the actual reason because I believe last year we actually, we kept moving it. We kept bumping it a couple of times because we, we were like, well, can we do it here? Can we do it here? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd certainly be willing to revisit the reason for having it there but that's sort of my understanding of why is that I remember when I, I did mention it recently to Jamie and he was like, I don't know, it's pretty handy. Or maybe even Carl said this is pretty handy because you have more accurate numbers by that time. Correct. Um, I think this goes back to Act 60 uh, days. Uh, I think a lot of schools went into May and then went back to uh, the traditional March because of. Uh, information the state was giving out for schools at that time, but I think it is faster now, and I think most schools have gone back to uh, March. Yes, it's 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 certainly something we could bring bring to the board as part of our report, um, moving it back because obviously that would um, simplify some things. Yes, Justine. I wanted to know if we know if the schools that we um, that we were reviewing their language for for this process if if they use australian ballot or a floor vote if That's there's a... multiple towns in a floor vote i just wonder um it, I, how we would solve our uh equal representation situation or you know seems kind of chaotic to do a floor vote and separate only stockbridge people are voting right now for the stockbridge person I, I'm not sure how that might work, but maybe. Well, of course, else. the one thing we can see is that they don't put it in their article that it's a by Australian ballot. So we do know that, um, but we would have to uh, um, check with them if I, you know, it may say somewhere else in some of their other articles that they do everything by Australian ballot. So then it would just be covered by that automatically. But I think it's a it's a good question to find out. Um, yeah, I, I, I would agree it's chaotic to do it on your floor vote. I mean, if anything, I would say to you that I, I would I, I would think that doing bare minimum your directors uh, from Australian ballot, if you're going to do a nominate and elect from their own representative town, I think an Australian ballot works. Um, 
and I have to tell you, it's it, sometimes also doing everything by Australian ballot is um, is cleaner. I just think that some people are very nostalgic about the idea of having town meeting, you know, having a floor meeting, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's easier. You go in, the polls are open until seven and and you vote, right? Then yeah. it, it's easier for people who work, I think. Um, but well, that's, that's, a that's a decision that, you know, I'm, ju I'm just putting out there, but that's a decision. Well, it's, clearly for you also, all. it's not going to be something we're going to change this year because that, that takes where your date is, is something that has to be done a year in advance, I believe. Correct. Well, what your, what your date, what your date is, is it would be for your next, not this year. It would be for the next year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But your decision to, you know, if you think you want to move to complete Australian balloting in a non-COVID year, I think this year putting it as your articles and, and warning that for for approval from the voters this year makes the most sense mm -hmm. for you yep. to do it. Because you're Good. getting a freebie year, as Mr. Yeah. Pratt sort of indicated. Do we have uh, further on this? Well, uh, well, my teacher wife ha just reminded me that teachers' contracts come out in April, and mm -hmm. to, and to be voting in May kind of puts a crunch on that thing for the districts and for our districts that vote uh, for May instead of in March, because they are they need to sign their contracts. So uh, that's one of the reasons that would be cleaning it up if we went back to March. And going back to the Australian ballots, you know, uh, Stockbridge, at least that way, if they went to Australian ballot and, and Rochester went back to Australian ballot, would know how the splits go. And then we can discuss those. And if there's a big issue somewhere, we would know it and then we could address it. Right now, there's no way if we combine the voting that we can do that. So, you know, that's not right now in an article of agreement, but that's our SUD board that needs to decide that and decide whether, you know, we want clean voting or we want the most popular voting. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's one of the things that need to be addressed. Just Dean. Um, I think I think what Tim is talking about is kind of is a, a different piece than um, who gets to vote for which director because i do believe there was a pretty clean breakdown in how the votes turned out in this recent director vote uh, I, you know who voted for who for each town but rochester admittedly broke the tie for me to be on the board and so that's the issue really is the you know the numbers were there but it's you know the question of we don't necessarily want rochester voting for on Stockbridge and Stockbridge voting for Rochester people. Yep. So, okay. so that would do well, hold on a sec, Tim, Tim, just wait a sec. Dina, go ahead. So one of the decisions that the board has to make, and 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 I can send you further information about this too. Your voting la in your last election was an oddity because your votes were not co were they commingled? I don't believe they were com they were reported they were reported out separately which is i think what happened but then we commingled them correctly but um the issue is is that a board would also be making a decision whether or not the votes would be in fact commingled on things so in other words i have clients who are adamant that things should be commingled um in votes in terms of specifically for issues about budgets because when you commingle it and you're a unified school district, there's a value in having it commingled as opposed to breaking down, as Mr. Pratt is saying, where there may be some value for you all to break it down by town too, but that also may provide sort of an ongoing, hey, wait a minute, you've, you know, this town voted for it, this town didn't vote for it, right? So I'll, I'll use again, because they're not that far off from you, the Mount Abraham Unified School District. If you live in Lincoln, you vote in Lincoln. Um, you vote, I believe, for your own representative. 
you vote on the budget and when they go and they report out has the budget passed or has the budget failed, the vote is, you know, a thousand people yes and 400 people no. It doesn't break it out by town. So it's a commingled reporting. Um, that's also something that you all would need to talk about um, in, in terms of how you report out some of what your votes are. So there's that. So I just wanted to make sure that we understood that yep. part as well. Yeah. Tim, did you have another yeah. comment? Well, uh, it, that is correct. But then at the same time, the directors would be split. So, you know, correct. that we could write in that the directors are done by town. Yep. And everything else is done by commingled commingled voting. Okay. If, if for if like Dina said, we can't split the actual voters up somehow. So if we can't split the actual voting count up somehow, so it's more equal. And this is not just us. This is throughout the state. The way that article is written is terrible. So um, I think between our two towns, we can come up with a way that we can fix some of the issues that are popping up and keep both of our little towns open, our schools open. So, you know, that's Good. it. Good, we think we're done with two. And there's sort of, actually there's three parts of this. Um, Charity has her hand raised. Oh, sorry, Charity I was looking at the agenda, go for it. Oh, you're muted, yep. Uh, yep, um, uh, just to be very blunt, you guys have heard me say this many times over the last year about transparency. I think at this point, if you were to change an article to add a level of commingling that's not already happening and take away another level of transparency, you're gonna piss off a lot of people in Stockbridge because that is one of their core subjects. I, for one, will be utterly pissed off if that's a move that's gonna come from this committee to recommend that the board move to commingling the budget so that we don't have transparency of, of a thousand people vote, we only know a thousand voted and it passed. You're gonna have a lot of ugly people speaking out about that, me being one of them. I would, I would not be able to recommend that. Well, I can, I, can, I, can I respond to that yeah. actually? Because I, I don't have a dog in this show, as they say, or pony in this show. Um, every year that you've done a floor vote, your vote is commingled. It's only this past vote that you did because of COVID that broke it out. Um, so when you do a floor vote, people raise their hand. You may be able to get a sense clearly that I wouldn't get sitting in the room of, oh, look, you know, I can see, you know, Mr. Pratt of this town voted and, you know, somebody else, you know, Justine from, you know, somewhere else, you know, <laughs> voted some. But it's a commingled vote you don't report it out because you've never voted while you've had the floor vote as a unified school district. You've never said, okay, all Rochester residents, yay or nay. So I just, I just want to point that out to you. Um, just in general, just in general. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but I just thought that I, I could, should clarify that. I have to say, I don't, um, I'm not I'm not as familiar with the articles as anybody else, but I don't know. I know we've talked about it in the board of whether they would end up, especially this COVID vote. You know, were they going to be commingled? Were they not going to be commingled? Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know that it's in our articles at all, as you say, because we were some the, right now. The articles are an open floor vote. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so I don't think I don't think there's anything in there about it. It, it, it would, it, but obviously, if there's an Australian ballot on something, I, I, I've got no, you know, I, I think let's change, <laughs> let's change the specific issue that we're talking about, and let's not try and, you know, change too many things in it. I, I you know, I don't, I don't personally feel that strongly about commingling or not. Uh, let me let me clarify. I didn't mean that we wouldn't know what the results were, but we would know where the issues are with uh, Australian ballot. I don't agree with co-mingling the, uh, all the votes, but um, if we can't somehow split, Stockbridge gets 1.5 votes to Rochester's one vote uh, legally, then at least with the Australian vote, we would know where 
the issues were. Uh, the justices of the peace in each town would count all the votes because then it's Stockbridge voters voting and Rochester voters voting. We, we would know those results. And then the, the, the directors from each town would be pulled out of that. And then the rest of them, you know, if we can't change the whole article, at least the directors would be the directors from Stockbridge, directors from Rochester. Mm -hmm. And all the other votes would then, we would know the results, but they would have to be commingled at that time. But, you know, commingle might not be the right word. And then if Stockbridge was opposed to something that Rochester agreed to, oh, oh, heavily, then RSUD would have to sit down and say, boy, you know, we need to work on this. I mean, personally, I'm all for more information myself. I just helps us make decisions. Um, but I do want to keep us, I do want to keep us going on this, if that's okay. We've got um, quite a bit more. Um, so uh, not to stop anything, does anybody have any more pressing questions on this first part? Yeah, so I think what maybe would help you, you all is I can lay out for you because commingling has some procedural issues that are different in terms of how votes are, are, are actually counted. So I can send you an email about that as well, Ethan, so you all can take a look at that. So Great, let me thank you. Yep. Um, and then B and C sort of got run together. Uh, B, a question was, what would also, uh, we would also like to combine articles seven, nine, and uh, Roman numeral three into one article so that all the voting information is together. And second part of that was C, how do we turn off articles seven and nine, but leave them in agreement for historical purposes? And Dina's answer was, the language if approved by the voters would amend the articles of agreement. You don't wanna move sections around, that is not, that is not needed and will only confuse people. Um, we thought it would help clarify uh, because the voting issues are sort of spread out through our articles in, in not a very sensible way. And we also know how fast this was put together. Um, that was the intent behind this of just mm -hmm. clarifying. We want people, you know, we're gonna work on this in several different ways to be able to look at the articles of agreement and be able to go bam, 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 bam. That's all makes sense. And right now that was one big one that came out to us was that it really didn't, you know, it just was, they, they seem to not be connected to each other in any sensible way. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason why I said that, Ethan, is that if we do that, and it's basically, it's an organizational issue, and you may not be changing some of the language in all of them, but you, you are turning off, the, when you said turn off, is that, I'm sorry, my dog is, <laughs> who came in, um, is that I've got to prepare an article to be voted on by your public that lays out what everything is. And I think that's asking a lot for people to do that. So say, and I'm sorry, I don't have your articles up, but say article seven is, is about how directors are nominated and elected at large. You're going to see in the, and, and, and what the article that's going to get warned is it's going to have new language underlined and old language crossed out. So people are going to see that, what the change is. But if you start moving it, I then have to come up with an article question to explain to people, we want to move our, you know, these articles around. And then you're asking people to understand something in order to be able to vote on it that is not going to be easily transmitted, which is why I said as – as organizationally as it's not, you know, smooth for you all how it's written, especially if Article 7 and 9 are the ones that are going to be impacted by how you do your nominations and your election and getting rid of uh, voting at large, I don't think you need to move it. I just think that'll confuse people. But maybe I'm, you know. Jared and then Justine. So essentially, there would be some visual format to it that would where where we don't want to move it around and we don't want to rely solely on someone understanding that language in the new Article 20 overrides Articles 7, 9 and 3. There would be a visual format to help people understand what they're looking at with the amendments. 
Yeah, so where it says you have a provision, and, and I, again, I apologize, I don't know if it's one of one of these, you have a provision that says uh, directors will be nominated by their, I think it's nominated by their town and then voted on at large. What the article is going to, to show individuals is it's going to cross out the at large part and it's going to be put by town of resident, by the voters of their town of residence. So that people, and that'll be underlined so that people will see what that language change is. They're not going to get your full articles of agreement to, to look at. You probably, it makes sense to have, you know, a copy or two at, at, at where the polling place is going to be um, so that people can in fact see everything, but they're not going to get a 14, 15 page, whatever it is, document to, to go through and then say, yep, I agree that we changed that one. I'm going to give the language that you're going to be putting into your articles of agreement. Does that does that help? I don't know if that helps. It does. Okay. Justine? Um, one thing I do have to say is that these um, the proposed adjustments are in paragraphs that are very close to each other, and I can I could foresee that you could cross out the you know say seven the part of seven we don't like and then rephrase it and additionally add the exact language from nine in article three and then lower down cross out all of nine cross out all of three it's really incorporating that information into seven so you're not skipping down skipping there's an article in between that that has nothing to do with voting is really what we were trying to do mm -hmm. um, it's not it wouldn't be a 14 or 15 page thing it would be like a half a page our articles are very short i mean right so, now yeah so each each change you want to make i have to do a different article for people to vote for each separate section so number seven you would have to do it right. separate it couldn't be visually included with the other two Okay. Right. So, so, so in other words, uh, you know, will the legal voters of the towns of Rochester and Stockbridge approve? Um, and here's the language. And then the next one would be, will the legal voters of the town of Rochester and Stockbridge approve adding that to, to, you know, provision nine. So you're going to have an incredibly, that's, that's why I'm saying you're going to have an incredibly long ballot that I don't. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just didn't think that it would. I thought it would lead to confusion. That's yeah, a one. The oh, would be one. It would. One of the warnings would be section nine, and it's all crossed out, and there's nothing to offer in that in that warning, right? Yeah, that it would be. Yeah, it would be. It would be. You know, the voters remove article nine, and then it would be demonstrated by having it crossed off. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that is confusing. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, Tim. You had a comment? That's only for one year, though. If this marriage is going to last, maybe we should do that one time, longer ballot, approve. People were people were very confused, uh, in the first one. And it yep. shows now, you know, we've got one person someplace saying that that's not what I thought was happening, and somebody in another place saying that, boy, that's not what I thought was happening. So, you know, if we if it settles confusion after one year and we can make this so that it works for both towns and uh continues for the next 10 15 years i think we should consider doing that. i think the other part of that for me is um is how how clearly we explain what we're putting in front of the voters you know that if we do a good informational article in the Herald and, you know, at our meetings and stuff like that. And at the informational meeting saying, okay, here's what we're doing. We're taking these three confusing sessions and we're rearranging them into one that's going to be much clearer. But to do that, we have to do it in three separate articles. So you have to approve all three articles to say, to get this clean one article that solves all those problems. So I think that's really about communication. And if we do a good job of that, then people will know very much what they're voting for. And I, I hear you, Tim. Uh, it clearly, one of the first thing, main things I got out of the last meeting um, was the confusion just on what's there on our merger agreement, you know, on, on the, on the, uh, the uh, SU webpage. 
So I, it might be worth it. We'll have to see what the board says about that if they're if they're willing to push that. But I I, I feel it might be. Um, any further questions on this B and C? Justine, Charity, Tim? No. No. Okay. Good. No. Let's move on to uh, three. All right. So, um, which document is the legal basis for our merger? Is it the warned and voted on articles of agreement? or the information that was presented at the BOE presentation for approval of the merger. The basic language in the two versions of agreement have differences that are causing confusion over what the two towns agreed to. Answer, the articles of agreement, which were voted on and approved by the electorate are the legal documents of the merger. Whatever was presented to the agency of education is irrelevant if it was not voted on and approved by the voters of your towns. For example, one of the proposals at the beginning was Rochester, Bethel, and South Royalton together. It passed, then had to, a revote and lost. Those documents have no control over the Union School District. Good. Do we have any questions about this? This sounds pretty straightforward to me. I think we now know what we're dealing with. Uh, Charity. So I don't have a question. I have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think anyone's going to be surprised by it. Um, uh, this is exactly as I suspected. Uh, it makes total sense. Like you said, it's kind of a no-brainer. But I think even though there's no legal background that we need to worry about from what was presented visually and on paper to the BOE at that presentation, I think we have a moral obligation for, and I don't think this committee is the committee that necessarily would do this, what I'm going to propose, mm -hmm. but someone, some committee or another subcommittee of the RSUD really should, for moral and ethical reasons, go back and get a hold of the original 706 study, as short as that time frame may have been for this RSUD, and go through the subject matter that was discussed in many of those meetings that was some very heightened argumentative conversations and some of that was brought to that BOE presentation and then just dropped like hot water on ice. I mean, it was never heard from again. Um, that the I, in my opinion, I'm only speaking for myself, but I don't think I'm alone in my opinion. That is part of why there is so much contention and misunderstanding that is still lingering today because there were conversations had that were not represented as those conversations had happened in meetings at that BOE presentation and then didn't end up in the articles either. That's like a ticking time bomb that someone really should do due diligence and go back through and say, you know, here's things that I granted, I realize he's not a part of the picture anymore, but here are things that Bruce lab said, were definitely on the docket of this situation, and then they were never heard from again. If something took up that much time over multiple meetings, why is it no longer a part of the picture if it was what led to some of the current perceptions that are creating all this contention? I don't think we'll ever be able to answer all of it. I think a lot of it's lost in time, but I really do think that some group within the board sooner rather than later really needs to put the time and honest hard effort into looking into that piece and while we don't need we don't have a legal reason to go back to it i really do strongly feel that there's a moral and ethical reason to go back and look at say this is what all was discussed but only a, a one percent of it ever turned into fruition so I would just say, and it's not a legal issue, but if it's something you believe was presented to the agency of education, they should in their archive of their meeting minutes have the documentation that was submitted to the agency. If they don't for some reason have it and, and their website it is not that easy to go through, um, I, I can tell Ethan who to ask up there to take a look to see if they can send it to you. So that's what's presented to AOE. That's not, I think, completely everything that you're talking about, Ms. Colton. 
Okay. No, no. And I don't think there's anyone on this committee that doesn't already have all of the documentation that I'm talking about. I just think that it's an exercise, just as I had suggested for this exercise and this committee, that when we're done this process, this committee, this subcommittee, I really strongly feel that one of our suggestions to the RSUD board as a whole should be that we suggest that they go back. I mean, let's be honest, there are at least two, possibly three, I think, members of the RSUD board that were also part of the 706 study for this RSUD mm -hmm. that in just their minds alone, we should be able to figure out, are there notes still around to do an exercise like I just explained? And mm -hmm. again, I go back to transparency and it's, it's, a, it's an issue. And it, I do believe that it is adding to that lingering misconception, incorrect perceptions. I don't think you're ever gonna truly uh, I don't think you're ever going to truly get this situation to a more amicable position unless that's something that's considered. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Justine? Yeah, I was, I was kind of going back and forth on how to ask this. And I, I sort of asked it at the last meeting when I brought up the, the legality of using the, the other version of the articles in what we're creating for our new version. And I just wonder, um, Charity did mention there were a few, there are several board members that were involved in that. And I just wonder how much we should be using of uh, old information that was kind of flushed out by other people and and um, maybe using it moving forward. How do we use that moving forward? That's my question. Well, and more clearly, should it even be on the merger agreement page and the S at the SU? I, yeah, I don't understand seems, why it should be there. It seems like all that should be there, I mean, except for historical purposes, as Charity's talking about. But I'm just saying if the, if the merger agreement is what we voted on, that shouldn't that be the only document there? And the rest is you know, in the archives. Right, and, but how do, should we be using it moving forward or should we be moving forward with a new process for that and it, it, because we're new people and it's a new, it's a new time. I, I just, I don't know about, I, that's my question. I know it's kind of vague, but. Dina, and I'll get back to you, Charity. So I, I, on the SU's website, I think is your study Right, I think it does, you know, it does the basic thing. It does the history of Rochester, the history. Of it Stockton. does the it does the it basic does We we were confused because it had Sing Sing Article One and Article all these things, and then we realized, oh wait a second, down 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 at the bottom, which was just numbers, was the actual voted on articles, and one of them has sixteen and the is it thirteen and eleven or something like that. It, it was very, I mean, it was very confusing for us just. You know, and I'm the chairman of this board for guys. I mean, you know, I, I just, mm -hmm. it was ridiculous. I felt stupid. The, um, the, yeah, the, it, it is a little difficult. The first part that you're going through, I think, is actually the, the study or, or the initial proposal, which I suspect somewhere in your meeting minutes, the board um, a, approved of it and, and, and there was a vote to approve it. So that would be a board document. It is coupled with your articles of agreement because I think that may be the whole packet that went to AOE. I could be wrong on that. Um, you're right. You have to go through multiple pages until you get to the actual articles of agreement there. We talked and none of it's labeled properly so that nobody would know what, right. what you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little tough um to do that so in terms of that the study committee report was uh, approved by the board the the study committee um and that was presented out so that is a board document so that is more historical it probably talks about uh, what the populations of the towns were. Uh, it talks about what your enrollment has been for several years prior to the study being done, uh, where you think cost savings would be, those kind of things. Um, and so that was all, that is a board document that happens to not be the actual articles of agreement that you're talking about. And I took a very narrow view of that, which is how do you govern your relationship between as a board? 
in having these two campuses. Um, in terms of maintaining that, that is a historical board document. So it does need to be, the first part does need to be maintained. In terms of, uh, I, I'm a little confused and I apologize, JC, about, you know, I mean, you can always look at, I guess, previous iterations of what articles of agreements were, proposed articles of agreement. Um, you can look at what your neighboring towns have, but the bottom line is that what has the legal authority is what your voters approved. And so in terms of if you're looking at it and saying, hey, we think this may be a good idea, and um, you know, we think that this language is a good thing, that's all well and good and that's fine to do that. And there's nothing that's wrong about going and looking at what other uh, towns do, you know, whatever town school districts do, whatever union school districts do about things. But in terms of what has the legal force is only that which is approved by, on your articles of agreement, which is approved by your voters. But you can look at that stuff, I, I, if I understood what your question was. I have a hand up. Jared, yeah, just hold on a sec, Jared, and let me get to Tim. Tim, you got a chance. What do you want to say? Well, I agree with everything that Dina just said, except that once again, this is unique. We were told, you know, we, we were going to meetings, we heard what was being said, and it was very few people actually. So um, the articles of agreement are written, presented to the board, the board approves them. And that was early October, October 17th, 2017, it's right on the RETN uh, video, the presentation was given. The presentation was, then we voted in November to approve them. We never went back and, you know, voters never went and looked at what was actually uh, pro pro proposed and uh, agreed to by the BOE. What was given to the BOE for one, could never have been financially done. And uh, the board voted then later on that never even had transportation built in. So it could never have been done. We, we were given bad information on the articles of agreement compared to what was presented to the BOE. And the BOE, specifically asked several questions that were brought up uh, in the 706B meetings and weren't really addressed the way that were talked about in the 706B uh, meetings. So I'm a little confused how the articles of agreement can be uh, more accurate or legal to voters that were not presented to the BOE that approved it to go forward. Thanks. So, so in order for a merger to happen, Mr. Pratt, the voters have to approve it. And so the voters approved and, and I can send to Ethan, I, I, I think I more than likely have what the ballot was. Um, I am also looking at an eight page submission to the Vermont Agency of Education on October 9th, 2017. Um, I'm sorry, that was, is yes, that, I'm sorry, I'm looking at AOE's summary and then it's the committee proposal that's dated October 18th, 2017. It was finalized October 5th, 2017. Then it has things like background, um, I could tell you how many pages this is, so there, you know, there is what AOE puts out as part of their meetings. It is a 26 page document of what the committee, the study committee was. It also has the proposed uh, language for the warning as well. And I can, I can send that out to you, but um, I, I can't answer. <laughs> some of these questions because I wasn't the one, I didn't handle this for you all um, in terms of what you're saying, but there is 
you know, there's financial things that are put forward here as the pre-CLA homestead tax comparison. Um, what, and things what, that, uh, what, uh, Gina, I just, I, I, sorry. Oh. Um, Charity, let's go. I think Charity and then Justine, I think that's the order it was. Um, so kind of to reiterate what Tim has and to put it into context of something else that JC had is, um, I agree, we need to move forward. I, I don't deny that at all because we're never gonna get progress unless we move forward. All I'm saying is that, um, you know, the document that Dean is talking about is the exact same. It's the 26 pages that we decided at our last meeting. We're not gonna work from those because it only the last three pages of the ratify are the non-stamped copy of the ratified articles that we all voted on. What I am saying is this, there are a lot of misconceptions. Tim mentioned the transportation piece. Last meeting, I mentioned the fact that the presentation to the BOE at the, the, the meeting on video, they mentioned the $300,000 in cuts. There are pieces of the puzzle that we still don't know. How did it fall? How did it turn out? Because there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that just got dropped on the floor, never picked up. And I do think that in order to move forward, we do have to take into consideration those pieces that got dropped on the floor. We need to investigate them a little bit and say, here's the pieces that we want to look at and why did the conversation happen in such, I'm gonna be really honest, there were heated debates that I, and I was present at most of those 706 meetings. Tim, I know you were as well. Um, and other people on these, this call are, we're in those meetings as well. And when you just drop those and there, and then you find out that the articles that you voted on have little to no mention of what had been presented in those 706 meetings as the key points of why this merger was gonna work, but then they're not at all reflected in the actual voted on articles. We have a moral and ethical obligation for some portion of the RSUD board or another subcommittee to go back through and look at those and figure out what pieces do we want to represent? Do we want to figure out what went wrong? Do we want to figure out why they got dropped? Mm -hmm. Find out the importance of them and put those in. Are we going to do it for every single conversation that happened during the, what, 12 weeks of the conversations? No, there's no reason to beat a dead horse, but there are some of them that are significant and were very significant at the time that are not represented in these articles, should be represented in these articles. And if they're not, and since they are not, need to be investigated in order to actually move forward and help make more of a realistic approach to having an amicable relationship that this merger can succeed in. Without doing that, I do not believe that we will ever get to a atmosphere that is less unfriendly than we're in right now. I, I don't know another way I, to say it. I, I, I will say, Charity, I think, I think that is the mission of this committee. I mean, I think going forward, we have a short-term goal, you know, which is what do we propose to the board that then can happen by town meeting day? And we have a long-term goal, um, which is um, more transparency, more transparency. And I think if, if, if those of you who were at those 706s, I was not even part of any of that until, you know, the merger was really sort of working its way. Um, I would love a list of what some of those issues were that were mentioned. I think that'd be very useful to work from, um, to say, boom, 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 the, all these things that were mentioned that are not in the agreement. That then we can then then I can then I can talk to you about them and we can work on them and they can be suggested to the board going. Yes. Forward. And that's that's why I mentioned that there's three people on the current RSUD board that I do not know how to gain access to the minutes from those meetings. Mm -hmm. But one of those three people may know how to get the minutes from those three meetings. Um, I'm not asking for, you know, anyone's personal handwritten notes, but. It, you know, I would assume that there are meeting minutes somewhere that would, uh, in my mind, be a more concise uh, representation of what was discussed in those meetings versus 
asking the three of them to try and remember from, you know, three years ago, what was said. Um, I, I don't think that's fair of anyone. I don't think it's productive. Let's not create more animosities or ugly meetings than we need to. But um, I also don't necessarily want to say, you know, open up to the public and say, tell me everything you hate, because that's not going to be productive either. Um, let's find a way to do it with as much factual information as we can. And yes, it would be on that long-term agenda. So, but I really do. I just very, well, very feel it's, it's got to be done. I'm hearing you. Absolutely. Uh, Justine? I just want to um, see if, I, I know Dina may or may not be able to verify, but she did say something that suggested that the Board of Education did get a copy of the warned articles. And, so um, that kind of contradicts maybe something that I was interpreting Tim saying that the Board of Education didn't get to see what was actually voted on. I just want to see if we can clarify if the Board of Education did see the, our, um, the earlier proposal and the what was actually voted on. So I actually just sent to Ethan the, by email the link of what I found from the October 2017 agency of education meeting and it does have art it does have proposed articles of agreement um part of the process of of going through a merger is that your proposed articles of agreement actually have to have a review by aoe typically they try it they they, they would like to see them sooner rather than later um because if they have any questions about it and they also have at the time um, present recommendations to the actual board. So the, the Agency of Education staff presents recommendations to the actual board of do we, you know, do we recommend that this is approved? Um, and so I, I suspect that the articles of agreement, that there probably was some conversation with the attorney up at AOE about, you know, if there was any concerns about making sure that constitutionally you you had the correct representation in terms of how many uh, representatives from each town, although I think the populations are relatively close to each other, but I'm not sure about that. And I'm sure Mr. Pratt will tell you if I'm wrong. Um, but so they did look at it. And so the document that the link that I sent Ethan is what the agency of education, the state board of education, excuse me, um, reviewed and voted on in October of 2017. So in terms of um, what was warned, um, I, I'm, I'm, there should be a record of what was warned and what was on the ballot and what was provided. Um, and so if there are differences, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure how to answer that for you. Okay. Uh, there should also be minutes. I, I, I think Ms. Colton is correct. Okay, I just think it's important to clarify a board that the Board of Education did see what the public saw, just to, you know, so we weren't, I mean, there was some representation that maybe the AOE saw something big and grand, and then the town voted on something very different, and they didn't get to see that. I just wanted to make that very clear, that the Board of Education, maybe we can't answer that now, but I would like to look into it and make sure. Yeah, so here, here's what I, I will go out slightly on a limb and I will say to you, I think there's a, th there may be a distinction here that you will find at the end, which is I think that what the State Board of Education voted on is also what was presented as the Articles of Agreement for your electorate to vote on. I think where a lot of some of the stuff over the years that I've heard is presentations that were provided um, in informational meetings from the consultant. It seems that th that seems to be a lot of the things that I've heard um, from various citizens who who have um, raised a, well, you know, questions about things. Let's not get too much into speculation. I think I think that's Charity's point is that we really want to we really want to get back to what what details we can find and, mm -hmm. and go from there, because I think, you know, as we say, if we get into the, well, I heard this and this heard this, that's going to lead right. us down a foxhole. 
Well, right. So the reason why I say that is, is that it, um, <laughs> one of my law partners is the one who did your warning and who did also, I think, assist in, in drafting up your articles of agreement. I more than likely, and I'll look in, in the file, I'm not online at, for work stuff. Um, I more than likely have your final ballot that was presented to the electorate, at least, or the draft that was presented to the board and whether or not there were changes made from that point, I can't tell you. But what we probably sent to the board to have voted. I, I will also point out, um, I don't know if it makes any difference in terms of what you all are talking about, because I'm not necessarily clear about it, is that under 16 VSA 706 F, there are basically only two articles of agreement that need to actually be, be presented to the voters, right? So, I, you, but we'll take a look and let me see if I have information that will help answer what your questions are. I very well okay. may. Well, this is, this is the whole point of having you on tonight too, is we, these were our basic questions and this is the deep yeah. work that we need to, we need to pursue. Charity, mm -hmm. you raised your hand. Uh, just the, the article, the pleba, sorry, the document that you just sent that Dean, I believe forwarded to you, it is a culmination of the 26 page document that we all decided last week we were not going to work from. We were only going to go from the stamped ratified copy and also an additional add on in the beginning of it from what looks like AOE itself kind of mm -hmm. summarizing it. So it again is that same culmination of added together documents that we've said we don't want to work from, but it does clearly show that the what was presented included 13 articles and uh, actually JC's shaking her head. So I might be wrong. Um, but it's, it's another piece. Like, again, like we need to move forward and figure out. Uh, I think, I think for, for tonight too, I think we need to move forward um, in the sense of what do we really want to get accomplished quickly? And we've clearly set some agendas for what we want to look at as we keep going with this committee. Um, you know, for, for, for transparency. Um, Justine, uh, quick, and then Tim, just, I just want to finish up if you had anything, and then I wanted to move on. Yeah, I want to move on too. Uh, just for the record, though, in that document, Charity, attachment E is the proposed warning to the public. I just wanted to clear up for the record, whoever is listening, that the Board of Education did hear the 26 pay, uh, did see the 26 pager, but also saw what the town was going to vote on. That's all I wanted to clear up in that question to Dina and now. So attachment E, they did see that. Thank you. Okay. Tim, do you have any final comments on this section before we move on? Yeah, so the, yeah, in that BOE meeting that uh, RETN had on, they said a couple things. You can go back and modify the articles of agreement sometime down the path, and at any point, uh, the board can look and make sure things are going smoothly. They put a five-year timeline on that, but they did say at any time you could look at it. So that's what we're doing now. Uh, for a legal question and bringing up, uh, consultants. At one point, the consultant said a 706B committee legally had to stand by the articles of agreement that were presented to the towns. I've got a question about having three 706B committee me members currently on the RS board. And uh, is, can they change that or not? I'm I'm sorry. Can somebody repeat what Mr. Pratt just asked? Dina, can, uh, and just with the dog. Is it... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's my dog, um, and I don't have I don't have a headset. Sorry, my husband's trying to get him to be quiet. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Pratt. What are you What are you asking? Can you still hear me? I can hear you now. Yes, because my dog finally. Oh, quiet well, dog. I'm a dog person. I have no problem with that. So. My question was, are 706B members that were there at the time of the article, but are now, now on the RSUD board, mm -hmm. go forward with new articles, or are they legally trapped from the old ones? 
if they help create if they help create and devise what the previous articles were as a board member there's no prohibition if they're a board member now correct there, there's no prohibition on on them being involved in you if you wanted to amend your articles okay thank you you're welcome good Ken, i'd like to move forward if we can okay uh you have one more comment charity yeah go for it no this next one coming up is the one where i really want to clarify because i think okay. my statement was misunderstood i i think i i think you sent me something afterwards that i yeah i get it i get it but that's okay it's not a bad question to ask anyway and um, um, um so do you want dina, me to yeah, clarify and dina if you could just uh, mute between your talk and that way we can at least yeah um so let me read, this is uh, our fourth question. An article in the agreement stipulates that after the first year, budgets for the two campuses should be merged in all district budget documents. Do we need an amendment to change that back to separate budgets as it is an article of agreement or could the RSUD board instruct that change to happen at a meeting? And the answer is it would need to be warned, vote held and approved by the majority of the voters who vote at that meeting. I do have to say, this is Dina, um, it is not efficient to require your business office to do two budgets. And realistically, it is just additional work as the vote for your budget is the amount required to maintain both campuses combined. Keeping the campuses separate keeps the division between the two towns ongoing. And why don't we go, Charity, right to you so you can clarify that. Yeah, um, I never intended for us to go back to two separate budgets. Okay. My intention was, um, so prior to moving back to this valley, I worked for a company internationally and I did the books for three extremely large um, international computer companies around the world and handled a large portion of their U Europe and US holdings. And every single location I have would have had some sort of clarifier. So if I was paying for safety shoes for a guy in Germany, it might have, you know, safety shoes is account 155 dash one, and that would clarify what site it was happening at. Whereas 155 dash two would clarify Burlington, Vermont. So I never intended for us to request that the uh, budget, uh, business office start doing a separate set of books, but there are definitely items on our budget that are, can be specified in a manner such as that to clarify, are these expenses happening in Rochester? Are these expenses happening in Stockbridge? And then there are also likewise some that we can't do that, such as SU spending, that's not going to be able to happen that way because that is allocated. It's funded. Um, it, 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 it happens from a different bucket of money with a different set of mathematical parameters around it. Um, those, I think the best we could hope for would be some sort of mathematical algorithm to um, proportionately expense them if we even needed to do that, depending on how much there is of that. But one of the things with transparency and accountability, and I have to mention that um, Superintendent Canarni recently, I believe it was on Friday, sent out a letter to all families in the SU. This is not just RSUD, but that is a goal that his, his office is working on when it comes to all budgeting and expense and accountability issues is they are trying to find and work on, and he had a very in-depth letter to families about it, um, that that is one of their huge goals moving forward is to take actions that will promote more fiscal responsibility, more transparency, um, easier access to accurate numbers at a, a more rapid pace of availability. Um, that was my goal in asking this question and this hotspot. So it's, and I do believe that there are pieces of that puzzle that are already happening with Rochester and Stockbridge. Um, I just don't know that that information is being presented to at meetings in a way that that's understandable to the layperson at a meeting that doesn't understand counting the way I do. Um, 
that was my goal of this. I, I never intended for us to say, oh, Rochester, you've got to have your budget. Stockbridge, have your budget. That completely defies the, the concept of the Act 46, merging those schools mm -hmm. together and creating one set of books versus two, but creating one set of books that has a mechanism within it to make that more easily, make information more readily available without causing significant impact. I mean, in my mind, having worked in accounting for a very long time, anyone that's working on the books at the SU should not be unfamiliar with what I'm suggesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that should, they should have learned that in like accounting 101. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there, is there, do you have a clearer, I mean, what, what is this? You called it an algorithm, a, um, what is exactly, we're looking for a mechanism for it's basically you have a, a site, there's a site differentiator. So, and I don't know if, I think she's on here because her name just popped up. So Janet Whitaker is on here. And I know that this is a piece of the puzzle that she does for both Rochester and Stockbridge, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as I said, I believe Superintendent Canarni is already trying to implement this exact concept. Um, it's just a matter of, do we need to write it in? And when I mentioned it the last time, you know, I think we need to find out from the SU what their intentions are along this line, because it may be something they're already intending to do SU wide. But I know that it's something that did not happen at the beginning of this merger and it caused a lot of frustration. It also did not help that we went through multiple business managers, all with different interpretation of how the world works of accounting, you know. Yep. You know, I don't step the same way as the next person steps. So um, that's it. I think my my intention and my suggestion got taken a little bit out of context. Got you. I understand that. No. Good. Um, so, so if I can answer that, you don't need to amend your articles of agreement. What the board would need to do is have a conversation with the superintendent about to what level of detail that they would want regarding what the finances are. I will tell you, there are some things that would be concerning for me. You're not going, actually, no, I, let me remove concerning. Uh, I guess that's not it. I'm not sure the value of some of, some of that, I understand. Um, I think it's also a conversation to have with super, uh, Superintendent Kanarni and he can have with the auditors on that. And I believe that Ms. Whitaker indicated that something, I don't want to speak for her, but it looked like her comment was that the um, the program should have the ability to do that or something. I'm sorry, her statement says, if I understand charity correctly, there's an accounting process that does code in the manner that it, she is referring to. Um, but in terms of the, I think the discrete legal issue that you were asking, that's a request from the board to the superintendent and a conversation with the superintendent about to what level of specificity do they need or believe that they need financial reports to be. Great. So my, so my question would then be is, do we not necessarily need to amend it at all or do we need to amend it just to the sense that, um, I, I guess that's where I'm confused is, do we need to amend it at all or can we get an agreement from the SU, which in my mind, the, the letter that Superintendent Canardi sent out on Friday sort of spoke to that already. Um, so yeah. I think that's just maybe the board having a more direct conversation and getting mm -hmm. clarification on that. And this isn't an issue we need to put on the cost spot piece. Well, what, what would be useful, Charity, too, is, again, um, a list of areas that you would like to see the differentiation. You know, yeah. if there were even line, literally line items, you know, I think there, I think it's just in like general. Um, I think it's in general because again, I think you're going to have to get, um, I never remember her name correctly. Is it Tara? Tara. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, so I think you would have to have her probably explain it more because I've only ever seen the budget in pieces at, you know, proposal time for voting on the budget. Um, you know, what she sees in a computer system is very different than what you're seeing on paper. And, you know, myself, I'm used to 132 digit codings. 
just to signify I spent $36 on a pair of safety shoes. So she's familiar with that and she would be best and superintendent Canarney um, with her, their accounting teams to help figure out what's the best way for them to utilize and make that mechanism visible at meetings. Um, not everyone is going to understand, you know, a 85 wide Excel spreadsheet the same way I do. Um, and you have to find a way to present all of that information to the public that doesn't make them want to run for the hills and never deal with money again. Um, I'm not saying it would be easy to do it, but I do think where I myself have been pushing for transparency and accountability, this is something that's, you know, basic level accounting. Janet has confirmed that it is, it is a piece that's in, in the puzzle. Um, but as a board, we need to figure out how to get that visible to the public so that they can understand that when it comes down to brass tacks, if you have $100,000 of income coming in from Rochester for tuition kids, but you have $150,000 of expense going out because of, you know, a boiler that just keeps dying every other day. Um, and no company in business that has multiple sites isn't going to take into effect the consideration of, yes, I have two sites, but are both of them profitable? It's no different in this situation. Granted, we're talking about children's education, but there still needs to be, even though we're one budget, some form of mechanism to allow for site accountability mm -hmm. from a fiscal and you know responsible fiscal standpoint. Good. Uh, I'd, I'd like to jump in here. Tim, go ahead, Tim. So the reason it was split up 60-40 was very simple and it was accurate at the time. It became inaccurate when we didn't dump daycare in the high school. So to have an accurate uh, budget without a whole bunch of nonsense, I mean, Charity's point is exactly right the way it stands today because for, for reasons, some people don't trust how the budget is. And I think it's accurate and correct, in, uh, you know, reasoning. Rochester School is 2,200 square feet. Stockbridge School is 11,000 uh, 11, square feet. So Rochester is 22,000 square feet. Stockbridge has roughly 45 kids in elementary. Rochester has roughly 55 kids in elementary. But we have almost exactly the same number of kids, K through 12. So we have like 90 kids a piece. So to make this completely so that somebody could just go to the budget and say, Rochester is double, almost, but not quite kid-wise. So 60-40 is correct. Without the high school and the so what Rochester people have to understand is that Rochester has to dump this high school to the town of Rochester. Then the question is, does Stockbridge really need to pay $100,000 or whatever it is and pay that 40%? Because that doesn't make any sense. So, uh, you know, this isn't Rochester Stockbridge. This is, let's get rid of what is the issue then our RSUD board doesn't have to dub around with the high school and can actually start concentrating on kids. So, uh, and I think it can be done fairly simply if we just put out the transparency. Thanks. Good. Justine, comments, thoughts? Nothing right now. Okay. Good. I think we've, I think we got it. Um, Dina, thank you very much. Um, much appreciated your time and effort on this. Um, and uh, clarification, very glad we had you on tonight. Thank you for making the time. Yeah, Not a problem. Thank you. No, th th thank you all. And I'll, I'll look, Ethan, about the documents that we talked about and see if I can't 
get you Let's, some more information. I mean, as you say, that's as we as I hope you got the sense. That's not an urgent thing for us. This this sort of voter allocation, I think, is something that's you know we're going to find out a little more tonight and you know at our next meeting what are our real priorities that we're trying to get done now. But okay, the more information you can find, and certainly if some of it's in your office, that would be great. That would be very yep. useful. Not so, a problem. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep, you as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, all right, I want to get to our public comments. There's the agenda, thank you. Yes, let's see who's on, if we have some people who would like to speak. Um, uh, Janet, do you have a comment for us? Janet Whitaker? No, no, I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Janet. Joanne, do you have a comment for us? No, I think you guys are doing awesome. I don't want to. I don't want to hold up your time. Get get back to work. <laughs> yes, no, thank you. Oh, great. thank you so much. Thank you, Joanne. Okay, Karen, do you have a comment? Karen. Rubin. Um, yeah, I actually, I actually do. I just want to um, say that I appreciate Charity being so passionate about the, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the idea of transparency. Um, going back to when you guys were talking about voting, I think having those numbers are not necessarily a us against them type of situation, but it is an indication to the board as to what the communities actually are feeling. And that in itself is going to be what ultimately makes this merger a success. Mm -hmm. So I, I do agree with that transparency and having account that's um, more accurate as far as either town is concerned. And again, not to cause animosity about issues, but to fix issues. If a town has a predominant issue with something and they're outvoted by the other town, mm -hmm. it's important to know how to balance that. And it's important to know who we need to talk to. If you that's combine great. those numbers together, we don't know who needs to be heard and what they need to be heard about. I don't know if this is the vehicle to do that. I'll be honest with you. That's what you guys are the experts and on this committee for. But if it is, I think it's imperative that we not, um, that things aren't done, everything's not done quickly. Because quickly is what got us into this problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I understand that, you know, it's it's time consuming and also time sensitive, but you know, again, what was said last week, it can't be rushed. Yeah. The other piece of it is again that transparency. I think that um, the the position of being able to identify locations in some of the budget items is extremely important. I know that there are multiple payroll tax groups within a business, uh, so you know which are profitable and which are not. So obviously it, it does happen. And as Janet said, it can happen. So again, that piece of transparency is gonna lend well with the voting transparency as well. So uh, that's my point. I think keeping things as transparent as possible and out there, not behind closed doors, no dark curtains or anything like that and also making sure that the communication is is out there as much as possible. I think if you guys communicate as long as this first stab at the the merger um, articles will be, and it will be painful for some people in next year, I agree with Tim, it's necessary, it has to happen in order to move forward, but we are all really intelligent people. And as long as you guys find the appropriate methods to communicate that information beforehand, keeping it transparent, I think that the community can take a large document as long as you guys are using your vehicles of communication as effectively as possible. So thank you guys for doing this, for showing up and spending this time on it. Um, I appreciate it. I really do. Cause I think that it will make a huge difference to the success of this merger for the long term. Oh, thank you, Karen. Pat Harvey, do you have a comment for us? 
Oh, I've been taking notes. Um, you know, my ears are usually open towards conversations about the high school. It, it really only came up once. I'm sure it will come up again. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting and and taking it all in and writing it down. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Um, and then we have one phone caller in four four three one five. Do you have a comment for us? This is Rob Gardner. Can you hear me? Oh, hey, Rob. Yep. So I have three points, and I'll try to get through them fast. Um, first, I'd like you to let me know, and I apologize if I'm the only one that doesn't know this, exactly what the charge or the mission was this committee had. What was the, What's the point? Because it seems to be you're, you're talking about so many things here that's a very broad. So I'd like to specifically know what the mission was, what the charge was, who the people are on the committee, first and last name, or what town they're from. So I'd like to know that just for my own benefit. The second is that I would be concerned that the board or the committee or whoever they are is seeking to dissolve the merger in place by rewriting agreements, rendering a merger in name only. Separate budgets, however that's worked out, and separate voting blocks for board members, to me, does this. Uh, pretty much rem renders it moot. And this is just my opinion, not uh, just an opinion. I think that transparency to one person is an indecipherable pile of data to somebody else, particularly a layman. So I, I would just kind of caution that we don't, for the sake of transparency, produce gigantic amounts of data nobody can make any sense of. Finally, the whole BOE meeting on video is a gigantic mess. The process was a huge mess. There was no time. The consultants were questionable. It was a chaotic process. There was questionable competency, in, in my view. It was a huge mess. Charity's right about that, but it, but that's the past. That's the it. It doesn't help us. All this discussion and this sort of prosecutorial questioning of this and that. How does it help us? The biggest challenge I think facing is to establish good faith. Good faith has been damaged, and I'm hearing an awful lot of anger and uproar about things. We are not helped by going back to that tape or tracking stuff down or saying what did he say. I'm I was there for the video thing. I was on the study committee. It was a mess. And I won't take everybody's time up telling you why it was a mess. And it's a huge mess. It's a huge mess. But, but here we are now, and we need to look at what we have now and try to solve the problems. If you don't have good faith between the two towns, the merger can't work anyway. It can't work anyway. If you don't have trust and good faith between the two towns, the whole thing is, is it's just not going to work. And we should be working towards that. Uh, and that's it. Thanks. Thank I'd, like, I'd like to respond to that, oh, Ethan. Oh, 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 hold on. No, no, no. Tim, this is what? comment. And I well, think... yeah, but I think we need to address the comments as they pop up. No, I, I, I actually really feel it's important to hear people. Okay. And, and to just hear them. Okay. I just, um, and not that I support or detract anybody. I just think that's part of the rabbit hole that we can go down if we start, um, you know, um, I, I always, personally, I always listen to everybody and I always get, and I look for, okay, what, what's useful here? What's useful here? Um, uh, one of the things I'm going to just make clear, uh, I will respond that we have four board members, um, our, our committee members here, Ethan Bowen from Rochester. I'm the director of the, of the school board, um, or the chairman of the school board, uh, Justine, uh, Kalman Kavakis who is a Stockbridge member um, of the board, um, Charity Colton, who is a Stockbridge Town member, and uh, uh, Tim Pratt, who is a Rochester uh, community member. And our mission, as I wrote it out to uh, Tim, uh, was to look over the articles agreement and, um, and make any recommendations to the board of improvements we felt could, could strengthen the merger. Uh, so it was very much about strengthening the merger. Um, that was our um, that was our goal. Um, so that's that answers um, that's far. So the rest, I think, you know, uh, we have we have our opinions, um, and I think we're we have our our forward task, and I, I'd like to keep going on that. Um, I also need to find a power cable uh, quickly for my computer. So if we can just take a a, a brief recess for a moment and I'll be right back. I think I, I hopefully know where it is. Okay, thank you for just a few minutes. Thank you.
If we're back, let's see who's here. Charity, I just wanted to point out your hand is still raised. I don't know if there's some way to put put your hand down. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Sorry, still learning this meat <laughs> No, no, believe me. I've, I've actually never even used that. This is one of the first meetings anybody's actually used those things. Um, I will so, openly say I'm not tech savvy. Yeah, wait, but you must be with Excel sheets and all that, right? I mean, that's... That's trade. That's trade tools. That's okay. that's not tech. Like I couldn't tell you how to share that a month ago. I very recently learned how to share those like widespread. That gotcha. is not something they teach you. Not when it didn't exist. <laughs> I hear you. So, um, you know, just to, um, I, I, I don't want to cut us off at all. It is 820. I just want to see what our objective is for. You know, because we get through review hotspots and categorize um, and have another set of well, public comment doesn't seem to be because we don't have that many people on. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy to go any way the committee wants to go tonight. Um, if, if we want to keep working for another, I'd say probably we got a, a good hour into categorizing. Um, if we want to do that, because um, I have a very clear idea of what we're doing. We're basically going down to charity your list that you gave us last time. And we're going instead of saying, okay, do we need a question? Oh, sorry, Tim, are you back? I just want to make I sure I made sure. I'm back. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry. Um, uh, we want to make sure, you know, what's a question for clarification? What is a suggested area for change? And I didn't know if I thought there was a third sort of, um, but I, I sort of felt like there's maybe, maybe it's just two clarification and suggested area for change for each um, each article we went through and just yeah. had, had some sorry no that's good um do, do we want to do we want to do that tonight um keep going I well mean, I, I think I, we need to I, add I, one more okay what's is, this? It, uh it, it was left pretty well up in the air if there's a three three tie how that's going to be broken and i think there needs to be an article of agreement on how that is done it was, it was, you know, I asked Bruce that and he said they stay locked up until they come up with a decision. <laughs> so that what's, is not. What's, what do you mean a 3-3 three, three tie? Well, if three board members disagree on something uh, and uh, can't make a decision. Oh, the, no, I see. Okay. The mechanism, the mechanism for uh, breaking a tie in a, in a, in a, in a vote like that. Okay. And also, so here's the other thing. If, if a member is missing, that could break the tie too, which then a board member might come in and uh, halt the whole process. And that's exactly what happened in the building committee. And, I, you know, so I think we need an article to uh, fix that problem. Uh, it, well, let's 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 be disciplined in this and organized in this. I think we need to go down our list one at a time before we uh, um, let's add that one to it to our discussion. Well, I want to know if it's a committee, if the committee really thinks it's even worth going down that hole I, right now. But uh, I, I, I think it's certainly worth considering. I mean, it's something to put down there. I mean, do we want to do this? Do we want to get this job done tonight? Yes. No, I don't I think, think we can. I don't think we can. And I think we can uh, give you the go ahead to talk to the board. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You know, we're just a committee. You're the board chair. So you can pick and choose whatever you want to bring up with your board. No, 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 no. That's not that's not the objective I want from this committee. I want this committee to give me a very uh, with me to have a very clear series of one, two, three recommendations for the um for the board to consider um I, I i i don't feel comfortable being left with the leeway to sort of decide i also don't think we know yet um where we are on quite a few issues um so i i, I would not feel comfortable making up i would literally be making up sort of you know ideas about this there's some that charity brought up that i still don't understand completely uh, and that obviously from our fourth article what we put to dina there needs to be more discussion just to make sure I'm understanding some of these issues. Um, uh, so, um, 
well, then let's well, we're going to take this on. Let's let's do it. Um, if and I, we'll 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 see how long it takes. Uh, Charity, I agree. I agree, and you know I strongly disagree that these are the, our committee is not putting good faith to both towns. I think this committee right here can bring both towns to a reasonable agreement. And the one, the first agreements, like Rob said, we could have had a potluck dinner and shook hands and come out with a better idea than all this bureaucracy. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm all for making agreements that work for both towns and keep both mm -hmm. schools open and keep our kids right here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly, you know, I have, I have an opinion. Yes, a charity. Why don't you jump in here? Uh, we're let's, talking about sorry. lots of things here. I'm not sure what. Um, so I think, I think we definitely, in my mind, I don't know that we're going to finish this tonight. Only because, no. in my mind, I think we have pieces of the puzzle that Dina needs to get us some solid information. Even though we suspect, we suspect we know what she's going to come back with. I th think we need to get some clarification, and we don't have, we don't have verbiage tonight to present to give you to, pre to present to the board. So I don't think from that perspective, we will finish tonight. No. Um, no I think no. we may end tonight with a very solid plan of what we hope will be get presented. And, you know, I hope that what the four of us come up with is we will end, when we say we're ready for you to present something to the board, that you're completely content with what we want you to present as a group, That's not nice. as one person taking the liberty to decide. And well, I don't think uh, any of us see it differently. And don't um, forget, I, mean, I, I very much hope that when um, it, we come to that agenda item at the next board meeting, well, one, Je Justine and I will both be there, but I hope you and Tim will both be there for clarification and you know communication. But yes, that is my goal is I really want us to be um, together in what we feel is proper to go forward to the board. Um, and I think, you know, that it's definitely not my show here at all. That's, that's, that's the problem, been the problem perhaps, is that I think um, there hasn't been enough collaboration about what, what the issue is. So well, then, well, without further ado, let's, 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 let's work our way down here. I, I think I think um, Tim's point is something we can add add in there. It's not it's a we don't have a section for things that should be in the articles that are not yet. Um, so that we will have to create a separate section for that. Let's start with um, what's the top of, of, of your I think charities was the most extensive list. So what's the first one on yours and, and give us a number and a title, if, if you will. Uh, shoot. Let's see. I think so. The the two of my big ones we've sort of clarified, and we're waiting on answers from Dina. That's mm -hmm. the representative voting process, and that the changes we would like to see happen with that, and that encompassed a few different pieces of language on the original articles. Um, can the I budget just, breakout? Uh, Go ahead. Can I just do a quick straw poll of the four of us? Um, of those three options for representative, what's well, I'd be sort of curious to hear what people think is the best one. Um, what do you think, Charity? You're on right now. I mean, the Australian, the the open meeting, Australian ballot two days later, the voting at the town meeting, um, or the um, or the everything on Australian ballot. I think those were the three most realistic possibilities. Without having time to sit down and really think about it and look at a calendar, mm -hmm. my instinct tells me that going to Australian ballot for representatives, but allowing it in town meeting to like happen on the town meeting time frame, um, and having the way we change the language, change it to that moving forward, it'll be Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. That gives the board the most flexibility because you wouldn't actually have to say that it's going to happen during town meeting even though in the discussion tonight, that would be the most practical place to put it for time reasons and making sure that your representatives that have been voted in are the ones that you're going to be putting into positions, you know, elected positions within the board. Um, you know, like I said, not, not getting time to sit down and actually like map things out on a calendar and stuff. That's the one that makes the most sense to me right now, off the cuff. 
Good. Justine? I agree with Charity. In general, I think Australian ballot is a very clear and concise way to represent what happened as well as go through the process of voting. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about um, when it should be. I think for this year, the town meeting uh, idea is appropriate, um, but uh, I'm not sure what I think about uh, the future and when it, whether it should be at the school meeting or or the town town meeting. Tim? Um, I would go along with charity if it, but it might make it a little uncertain about uh, uh, to people about it, that it's actually the school. So mm -hmm. we would have to make that, you would have to make, we. Good point. You know, the board would have to make that very clear. So um, I agree wholly that it should be Australian ballot and it should be divided by town for the directors. I think that would be a fair and, you know, make make people feel good about that, that they're voting for their own town people and can't be overvoted one way or the other. Or, mm -hmm. you know, it could go the other way. So... Uh, one way or the other, we need to get to an article for Australian ballot. And whether the school, the school board takes this year, and it would only have this year to do it at your next meeting to vote to do it Australian uh, with, and change the way that it's done or um, and move it to March instead of May, which at this point would make sense but it does take one year and you know you you would have a hard time to do it but i those are just in between a, a, there's a, a good point was raised to me by someone in between our two meetings um in the week between our two meetings was to really think about the unintended or un, almost the unknown consequences of a particular proposal and I think this is charity you saying, boy, I need some time to think about this. I think it's exactly what you're talking about. So it, it seems like a clean, quick fix. And then Dina brings up, well, there's this issue here. And then we sort of go, oh, and then it's before this or after that. I mean, you, you really want to be clean and clear um, in, 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 our, in how we go forward and, and think that through. So I, I, I respect that. I just was curious, just top of our head, sort of where we were. Good. OK, I won't stop you next time this time charity please go ahead that's okay um so the other one that i have that was a kind of a big one that was on my hot spot list is one that i apologize everyone it's one of those ones that's written into the original document but not in the articles i think that were voted on but it's the language that is used to state that the board only can decide what kids go where um, uh, with the rearrangement of grades, meaning third graders could all get moved to Stockbridge, fourth graders could all get moved to Rochester. Um, so I that, really would uh, like us to see. Uh, uh, um, looking through it really quickly, sorry, I didn't look at it beforehand. Um, but it might be, it might fit more in that category of something that's not in there, but it is a piece of the puzzle that I've heard a lot of people speak about it um that you know they want to have a say in what happens with that and i do think that if there is a way to add it in or if there's language that is in there that we need to modify that the board itself would not you know i would like us to consider the idea that the board itself would not decide we're going to move all kids for certain grades to one building um and completely revamp what kids go what to what campus for what age without voter input um, um but play devil's advocate for just for a sec um if if financial constraints come up such as you know major deficit from the state um something like that um and there was a matter of speed involved i'm, I'm raising a question not out of any just just playing devil's advocate and i think those are pieces of the puzzle that we you know, if we are going to present this as an idea, 
we need to list those out. I mean, uh, that's a part of being transparent. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't mention that. We should. We definitely should. Because if the state comes down on us and they're going to say everyone has to have a certain number for this type of expense under this limit, and it means that every school in the state needs to move all sixth graders into one campus, I mean, I'm obviously making something up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Please, just that, is a re that is a reality that could happen. Yeah. Um, is it likely? I don't think so. But... Uh, did any of us expect that Act 46 was going to roll out the way it did and have so many loopholes mm -hmm. and missing pieces parts? I don't think so. So welcome to the world of anything can happen. Good. But I do think this is a piece that maybe I, I'm going to get have a, you know, for saying this, but, you know, maybe we don't necessarily vote, but I think there needs to be some mechanism to allow that people within the two towns get some sort of a say or input or time frame mm -hmm. to be a part of that type of decision. Because I know for me personally, uh, I've said it many, many times, it would be so counterproductive for my family to have any one of my kids that are in Stockbridge going to Rochester, because that would literally mean because of transportation restrictions and where my children do all of their other activities, I could not feasibly have my other child in middle school in Rutland. So, and every family is different, completely different. Yeah. So I, I think we, I just well, really want to take that in consideration. One of the things that's really important that we do to get through this list is that I think we, we, we title it, we number it, and we say, what is it? I think just so we stick to that, because otherwise I know there's a lot of feeling around these, but I think to get mm -hmm. this job done, we just need to sort of push through a little bit. Can you give me, um, even if it's in, you know, the DOE presentation or wherever you're getting it from, what, is there a number? Oh, Justine, you found this? Go ahead, Justine. Got you. In the warned articles at section 4A, and I just want to clarify the way I understand that section, um, says that uh, uh, at parent request, the unified board may adjust the enrollment based on student circumstances. At parent so the way, request? Yeah, and the way I interpret it is that the parent will have to request that prior to the, the board of directors deciding that. And I just wanted to- That's a different that. piece. That's a piece that allows a Stockbridge parent that wants their child to go to Rochester to request yeah. that. That's not the piece I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. So there, I, I apologize for not having it like already prepped out, well, but well, my, my question then is, are we, um, are you wanting to add something in there that will ensure what you're describing does not happen? Or are you specifying well, something think, that's actually been, been voted on and is law at this moment? That I don't, you don't and think I apologize it's again. Well, I don't know because I didn't look at it clearly. Then, Trudy, let's, let's move on. Let's yeah, move, uh, it, it, we've made note of it. Um, we need a title for it. Um, uh, campus and grade rearrangement. Thank you. Campus and grade rearrangement. Uh, grade rearrangement. And we at this point, we don't know how to categorize it because we don't know if it's an amendment or if it's a uh, suggestion, you know, or if it's a clarification to the board. So we don't know yet. So I don't think we can We'll put a question mark there. I just want to keep us and and uh and it's a new we're going to put new on it new article along with tim's oh my god my notes are a mess okay all right let's keep let's keep working down please what's your next and again if we have a number and a title even if you make it up off the top of your head just so we can know how to refer to these each time uh that's it for me uh i agree with tim's tiebreaker issue, um, something definitely to discuss, but that's it on my list. But there was some things about um, budget. Oh, where my my notes don't seem to but be in Dina, I think Dina pretty clearly clarified that tonight, that that is the my intention that I had mentioned last week. Once I clarified it, that's actually an item, a discussion point that the board itself Got would honor. need to discuss with Superintendent Canarney and address it at that level, not necessarily address it in these articles. So I kind of see that unless anyone else has, sees it differently, in my mind, 
that can be taken care of from a different avenue. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so then I'm, what I'm hearing is that we have a representative vote, um, tiebreaker, um, real, re, realignment. Is that a proper word? Realignment? Grade, grade realignment, grade realignment. Well, I feel wrong because I, I had my notes <laughs> very close by from the last meeting. And I thought we had more of these that were hot point issues. Um, and that's what I'm trying to look for. Um, I'm sorry, it did not get mentioned. In our think is um we had sections about the personal property it was 6a and 6c thank you okay um yeah. and uh, my the my hot point in 6c was specifically that it says the board gets to decide at their discretion what happens to the real property and whether it's useful to the district i think that um I, I don't love that language um and that, and i believe charity was interested in 6a but i can't remember why. Oh, looks like she's found it, or maybe. Uh, yeah, kind of clarified. Uh, six A was mainly because of. I just wanted to make sure that some of the language I've seen in the write-ups so far, knowing that it's not complete for the sale of the high school building, were in my mind potentially contradictory to 6A, and that kind of went along with what JC had just said. Not so much that it's a huge issue, but we don't want to have something written in the sale of the high school that's kind of come back and put a kibosh to that process if we have an article that says you can't do that. Um, and I did clarify, JC is right, it is four, and it's that that language is missing, and I would like to see us add something to that effect. Excellent. Uh, representative, uh, oof, my brain's slowing down. Um, yep, classroom, and this is an addition. Okay, so the budget, the budget question is an advisory one that we do some site identification Repres um, the reassignment of classroom of grades would be an addition, a recommendation for an addition. Tiebreaker would be an um, would be a recommendation for addition. It's hey, not Ethan. just classroom, but campus as well. Campus, campus and classroom. And Ethan, I think that the one I brought up, the board can actually uh, talk about and you guys can change that. You mean the tiebreaker? And if you vote on it and that passes, that would make it uh, legal. But yeah, we know. just have to come up. We have to come up with some ideas of how it happens. I don't know if that's Jamie can vote or, you know, we flip a coin or whatever. We just well, have to come up, with, come up with a mechanism. Right. And, um, you know, kicking it down the road for six months isn't going to do it. So I think you ought to put a, as an amendment on the agenda for your next meeting and just put it out there how your board wants to do it <clears throat> and yep. then and then the article people don't have to do it but uh well i know. think i mean obviously i would say i would think our our you know we want to have a, we want to do amend as little not not because we don't want to make change but we want to amend as little as possible because of the involvement of that you know we <laughs> want to make sure i think we all and i hope you agree with me that we want to be really clear and clean and have really thought through uh, uh, suggested amendments because that's such a big process. And if a lot of these can be taken care of at an administrative or a board level, great. You know, that's that's really, and I, I am, by the way, we talked about it last week, um, rewriting the labeling of how the, um, this was another issue, the, the labeling of the articles on the SU page, on the merger agreement um, webpage uh, that's something that I'm starting to work with uh, with Ray 
so that we can get some labels there and possibly even um, I would love to put the articles first and then put the other stuff as historical background data second. But I, I'm seeing what we can do about that. So I am I'm working on that now. Um, all right. So I'll just I, I'd like to go over these things a couple times just so I make sure I've got everything. Uh, property allocation or property dispersal. Is that the proper term, Justine? Property dispersal. What? I would say conveyance. Conveyance, thank you. Conveyance. And this is um, a recommendation. Is this an article? What are we trying to do with this? Um, this is a re just a re, uh, it's a recommendation or a change to um, the wording or. So yeah. that's an amendment. So that's an it's amendment. amendment. Yes. Okay. Um, because right now it states that the board. It's the at the board's discretion that uh, uh, property deemed unuseful shall be sold or conveyed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the public sh may want to be more involved in that, and it might be better to amend accordingly. And just while we're here, as Patty's yep. taking notes, I wanted to put her select board hat on and make sure that uh, as select board member, she understands how important it is to Rochester voters and taxpayers and parents to keep Stockbridge. And uh, she's aware that there's a petition down in Stockbridge to move to get out of the merge. So we do have to uh, do this committee quickly but the town of Rochester isn't uh, as upset with this merge as Stockbridge is. So um, they will be if Stockbridge unmerges. And, uh, uh, you know, can't say more than that. Any comment, Pat? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to speak for the voters. Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. If yeah. happens, it's it's not going to be my decision on what path to go. Pro, con, left, right, um, up the alley, down the main street. It uh, it it will be something that we have to go to our voters with. Um, acquiring the building. Um, the only thing that was, like, I'll reiterate this again. The position of the building was something that was voted on with the merger. Um, mm -hmm. they're not voting on whether or not we're taking that building back. We already voted on it with the merger. The day after we acquire the building, now we have to go and do all sorts of what you're doing pretty much, um, due diligence. And hopefully our committee is already, you know, pulling things together so that we propose to our voters what we're going to do with the building. So, um, the town would take the high school building um, with the contents. Mm -hmm. uh, if the building were ever to be continued as a school, uh, we certainly wouldn't want to have to go out and buy all of those contents again. So um, it, it keeps that avenue open for the voters of Rochester if that were to ever come about. And I'm not saying it is because it would have to be voted. Good. Um, well, here's what I would propose. Um, I've got these five issues, um, five, and, and, and sort of, uh, I would, I would sit down and do a recommendation. Um, basically uh, I'll put this into a report to the board. Um, and then, uh, I would recommend maybe we have one more meeting before the board meets in Actually, it's two, it's the fifth. Yeah, it's the fifth, I think. Two, 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 January. Yeah, first Tuesday is the fifth. So, um, uh, you know, I hate to call another meeting, but I think this might be a fairly quick meeting, though we might have some more information from Dina and maybe some language as well. Um, but that I would be willing to put together um, a statement from these five points um, and then have us look at that um, next next week. Um, how 
how do we feel about that? And Charity, why don't you go first? Um, I'm okay with that because I think the reality is the most we can do is make the recommendation to the board yep. through you guys, through you and Justine. And then Tim and I remain involved um, throughout the next portion of it to get it to the vote. Um, I The part I'm a little concerned with is that we have a few different things happening simultaneously. Um, one of them being the moving forward with the sale of the high school um, or, you know, the town acquiring that. Um, and I think, have we presented the concerns with the what's in the building question and ownership and that combination of the language being contradictory? Because I think that might have just been recognized as a piece that needs to bump right up to the top of the ladder and be getting answered ASAP because that could put a hold on a whole lot of stuff. Um, I, I know that that kind of supersedes all of what we're doing, but I would certainly not want to get to, you know, the day of signing and find out that, Oh wait, we waited three months to find out that an issue we recognized three months ago is going to hold this up even longer. Um, Everything else I agree with, but that one particular piece, I really mm -hmm. think we need to, to get clarification on because as Patty just said, the town is assuming that they're going to own everything that's in it, but there's language that I think contradicts that in these articles so, or could potentially contradict that. Okay. Justine, do you have a way in, please? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Charity. The 6A does uh, go, uh, does list land buildings and contents. And um, I, it, that was part of what Charity was really wanting to bring up last time. I think it's important. I don't know how we can get an answer ASAP, but um, it would be. Um, it, it, it is a potential issue if we are going forward with a conveyance based on um, something different than the language that was voted on. I, especially, I don't know. Yeah. especially if we know that, I, I mean, I know I've heard Bonnie mention on different occasions that they are storing things that the elementary uses in that building. Um, I would hate, God forbid, that we find out that $20,000 worth of you know, educational supplies was left in that building and now there's an issue because it was in that building when it happened. So I think we need to clarify that language and we also need to reach out to all the parties involved and make sure that they are all aware of when their timeline is to get things in, out or whatever in accordance to what we figure out the language means. Gotcha. No, I, I, I'm hearing you and I really appreciate your emphasis because, yeah, it didn't sound like a biggie to me, but I get it. Um, and I think that's something I can uh, absolutely put to um, Superintendent Kinarney and also to our, the main lawyer um, and sort of say, hey, look at this. What is this? And Bonnie and Lindy and, or Bonnie in particular and say, what does this mean? Um, we need a definition on this before we can do anything. Um, so I, I hear you, um, and I will, I as board director, I will act on that. Pat, you had something to add to that? Yes, I, uh, I've i been through the high school building, and I do know that Faye Severy has a room where she has items stored. Um, I'm fully aware of items that are, are not staying with the building, um, uh, in addition to electronics that have to be moved out of the building, um, intercoms and whatever. Um, but yeah, that that's already been identified, and it's it's not the intention of the well, town to take away anything that the school still needs. The um, I mean, yeah, good, okay. Point taken that that becomes the priority. I thank you for that. Um, uh, and but let's um, and it's possible that that I may not I might not wait for that to get put out there. I think I may put that to the lawyers tomorrow. A lawyer and, and Jamie Kennedy tomorrow. Well, here here's something I'd just like to add, and this is for both Rochester and Stockbridge. We can trust Patty to make a fair deal. She is not an enemy or uh, rooting for just Rochester. So if 
she did it with the daycare. She can do it with the high school, and we just need to trust her. And we can make the articles to go forward with this, and it doesn't have to take forever to do it. We need to dump the high school and get it off our SUD, and we can do it fairly rapidly if we just agree to do it. And then taxpayers will have less taxes on two buildings in Rochester, and we can concentrate on education in both districts. Good, thank you. Um, so aside from that priority, um, I would certainly be willing, I mean, I, I, the legality of that, I'm not sure whether we can, I think we have to, you know, I could send a draft around and I, I, I don't remember if you can make comments on that draft and send it back to me before we present it next week or whether that all has to happen in public. Um, let me get clarification on that. It'd certainly be the easiest way for me to send out, you know, like we did with the, the minutes, basically send out my rough draft and you have your issue, you know, and, and your additions or subtractions to it. And then we keep working on it. And then we maybe meet quickly next week to say, yes, that's good. Or this issue still needs some more discussion. Charity. Um, I do not know the legality of this. So that's why I'm going to bring it up is, um, is there is there the ability for a board a, a public board like this to utilize a google doc where or even like a word doc that's shared because the comments that people put in are you can keep them with it i don't know how that works is that considered us having a conversation about a document i, I, I don't I know but I, that I may be a, a quick yeah. way to get the original document out, get everyone's back and forth. And then we're each seeing each other's responses live yep. versus us three minutes after one person just did another email and getting, I know I got confused, yep. but I don't know the legality of, can we use that type um, of a platform? Let me, let me find out. It may be, it may be something we have to do in real time. I don't, I don't know. Um, so uh, let, let me find out about that. Um, uh, on a document because that would also certainly you know would say save, save us a lot of time and you know this is the holiday week so um it would be nice not to have to warn another meeting but um and that might be useful for the board as a whole if that's a platform you're allowed to use that just hasn't yep. been used because of the not knowing if it's allowed or not just an idea uh so in general, though, Charity, you're in favor of me just taking a stab at a document. And um, once we find out if this is possible and then passing it around to everybody. OK, good. Justine, and you're good on that. Tim? Yes, but does that mean we don't have another meeting before your meeting or? I'd, I'd, I'd like to have another meeting before our meeting. Um, I think we're I think we do it. I think, uh, you know, as I said, that idea of unintended consequences to take to, to have a meeting where we just sat down and took our recommendations and just really hashed out each one and thought of all the possibilities. I think that's be really, really uh, time well spent because we've sort of been trying to get to where we, you know, what we believe in or what we think is really important. And then to really have some final time to do that. So, yes, uh, one last meeting. Uh, should we look at that now time wise, cal calendar wise? What is let's see. I can do the twenty eighth, but I it's un, it's less likely that I'll be on time on the twenty ninth if that was to be a choice. Um next Monday. What are we charity? How's that work for you? I can do that. I can do Monday. Okay, Tim. Yes, I can do that. Okay, I think let's do it. Let's let's schedule ourselves to another meeting, um, uh, same time, and I'll get it. I'll get the. I think the agenda will be pretty simple. Um, review and comment on report to the board, but I will have a response to you as soon as I know tomorrow about whether we can work on this document. It may be that we have to wait for the meeting to work on it. But I, I, I hope the charity suggestion is, is doable because that certainly would 
get us a lot farther along. I think the thing is, is I, 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 I get my instinct is that it's not a problem to rewrite something. I think it's um, it's the discussion of the rewriting <laughs> that it, I, again, it's all this thing about making any decisions or conversation that is the public, you know, the public meeting law. Um, but I, I will get clarification on that for us. Good. Well, I I totally yeah. expect that I'll get uh, some suggestions to, <laughs> tomorrow privately. So you know, it it is a good avenue to go down, and uh, I think that the BOE would much rather see articles of agreement than the uh, Stockbridge Board putting to the BOE that we're unmerging. So we I I think this platform is better in the long run. Oh yeah, I I mean that's why I'm here. <laughs> you know, I I I want I I, I want this. I don't, there's no way to force this to work. <laughs> it, the only way we work is that people come because they they trust each other, and this is about opening trust and talking about it, and not putting any limitations on what gets talked about. Um, so let's let's do that. Okay, great. If we're we've got another meeting set, and we have um, is there another action item to talk? Sorry. Is there another chance to talk? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we did jump over that, didn't we? Yeah. You're right. Uh, let me let me do a round. Got you. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Janet, do you have anything to add? I, no, no, I'm good. I you sure that hesitation sounds. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna just see how things all play out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joanne? I, it's probably too late, but I've been sitting here contemplating and um, I just, I, I have a couple of ideas and I know you probably can't add them to your list of hot spots, but number 10 um, talks about the five years. And I know it's very confusing for a lot of people, um, or it certainly is for me, and that after five years, what happens? And it talks about um, that the board has will review what has happened with the the you know the unified district and have we met what we were supposed to do. Now, do do the townspeople vote on this, or is it just the board decides that we're good after five years? How does that work? I don't know. That's a good question. And yeah, I, I we need to follow up on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's. I, well, it, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to our list. I think. And oh, go ahead, Justine. I'm sorry. Um, jo no, Joanne just, still, Joanne still got the floor. Yeah, so but I want to hear what Justine has to say. Oh, okay. Go for it. Justine. I just wanted to clarify the wording because it says that the union district, uh, that the board will decide whether to recommend to voters the disillusion. Right. So then, do we vote? Right. So only um, if they recommend. Well, so that's then it's sound, really that's in what it sounds like to me. It's in six people's hands then. If we are done well, after five years. I mean, this is why we're working on the representation right. piece, right. so that so, you have representative representatives that you trust. Right. So, I would like to ask a question. It's not going to be popular. If it goes to vote. Could we do it by percentage of population? So if 80% of Stockbridge says yes, and 80% or 51% or of Stockbridge says yes, and 51% of Rochester says yes, it's yes. I mean, can we do it by percentage or do we always, or is Stockbridge always behind the eight ball because we will always get outvoted? I don't know. That's a constitutional question. So can um, it be asked? Uh, certainly can be asked. I'm writing it down. Um, and, and my other question is, is there any way that we can be protected from a large bond before the five years is up? Uh, we being Stockbridge or Rochester. That would be an addition to the it, articles. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. I hear you. 
both of those. Uh, okay. Take them into co co uh, to, uh, charity. Sorry, my tongue's failing. Sorry. Uh, I just want to clarify. So, Ethan, you're adding her concerns as another hot point item of both the manner of voting and that language be possibly modified in regards to that five year language. I'm at I'm adding two. I'm adding two. I'm adding um, five years. Uh, uh, can uh, well, we just need clarification on this uh, right. the recommendation and we need to know. Uh, and then it, we may come back and we may say it needs to be in there that it is a vote, you know. Yeah, five changing, years vote. considering the language, just as we did with yep. four, that we need to yep. possibly change the language to make sure that there is the option for uh, community vote and input. Um, and, and then also the mechanism of voting. And possibly a percentage of the population, not just per person, one person, one vote, where yep. we always well, lose. I know. Um, maybe we need an electoral college. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. Um, got Roger, you're still keeping going. your sense of humor, Ethan. What? Yeah. No. Roger, you're still Sorry. keeping your sense of humor. Bad, bad, bad pun late at night. Um, thank uh, you. Joanne, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's move on. Karen, do you have any uh, further? Did I skip anybody? No. Karen, you'd be next. Yeah, thank you, Ing. Um, I, I just want to make it clear that there was no one here this evening that suggested separate budgets. Not that I heard anyway. That was not what I took from that conversation at all. Um, mm -hmm. And I also think it's reasonable to believe that articles of agreement are a living document. And it's unreasonable to think that they would not be amended to ensure the success of this merger if that's what's necessary to happen to make it a success. Uh, I feel that clearly there are citizens of each town who feel that there is the ability to have a successful merger so long as the articles create a fair and balanced relationship between the towns. Um, and that I also feel that every citizen of Rochester and Stockbridge has access to this meeting and has a voice to the committee to consider uh, as tax payer, payers and benefit, you know, the benefit the both of the schools, Rochester and Stockbridge. Um, and then it doesn't always need to be considered as hostile communication no. at all. It actually um, is rather enacting our own due diligence and civic responsibility to both of our communities and and that's all i have to say but thank you all of you for the time that you're taking thank you karen good uh pat any i know we've been talking with you but just wonder if you have any other comment no nope. no nope. i'm all set good thank you and then i believe 44315 rob do you have a final comment no no comment Okay. All right, then. I uh, thank you, Joanne, for reminding us for public comment. I did skip over that. Just trying to get us out. Okay. Um, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, unless there's any further questions. Yeah. Uh, so move, Charity. Was that a move or was that was a question? Moving. Moving. Uh, I'm second. Good. Second. Same, Tim. All in favor, signify by waving your hands. Uh, I'm waiting. Um, yeah.